And, uh, and we proved to them one by one that the Amiga was, in fact, going to be as powerful and, and as, as excellent as, as we were claiming it was going to be. We thought that we were being very secretive about the Amiga and that we were uh, keeping it well hidden from the public, but our plan was flawed in two ways. First, we... Uh, didn't realize, but uh, we had, you know, there was, a, as, as part of the demo, there was a roar. As part of the demo, there was this big booming sound as the bouncing ball was bouncing off the walls and stuff like that. And there was a speech that was coming out. There was a, a number of sound effects. And even though the people standing on the outside of the wall couldn't see the demo, they surely could hear the demo, and everyone knew that there was something really serious going on <laughs> inside this room because there was all these sound effects that were coming out of this secret room where you couldn't see anything. But the second flaw was even worse. Right next to the our booth was an escalator that you could take up to the second floor <laughs> of the show, and if you rode this escalator, you could look over the wall and <laughs> see uh, we were goofy. <laughs> but it was great because all the while during the day, uh, you, you demo scene people will appreciate this too, all day long it was our job to, to give the demonstrations and to be there at the ready in case anything crashed. And it crashed over and over again all day long. The hardware would die, and then they'd fix the hardware, and that would cause the software to die. And we fixed the, hard, the software, and that would cause the hardware to not work. It was back and forth constantly. And, uh, and we would have minutes to get in there and make some changes and make some fixes well, because the next crowd was already you know, standing at the door wanting to come in and see the secret demo. And um, then, uh, and uh, but as soon as the show would end, everyone else, all the sales guys, would go off and have dinner, go home, or something like that. But uh, we, uh, we software engineers would, it's, you know, okay, finally everyone's gone. Now we can get to work, and we'd sit there and start working and coding and working and coding. And it was at at the uh, CES in the evening that we, we finally put the finishing touches on the bouncing ball demo and, and launched it, introduced it during the CES. It was, uh, we, we had all the raw material, but we hadn't had a chance to put it all together. And, and we, we finished it at CES. In fact, uh, the, we had, it was after the first day, and the first day had been an incredible success, and, and we, everyone was filled with joy and excitement. And, and the, the, the marketing guys took us out to dinner. We had an Italian dinner, and we drank a lot of Chianti and got ourselves really drunk over here to celebrate. And then went back to, <laughs> to the hall in that drunken state and started working on the bouncing ball. <laughs> and we had snuck a, a, a bit of beer into the hall, but we didn't have any ice. And so we worked the whole evening long drinking warm beer and typing away as <laughs> to get the demo running. And we did. We had it waiting for them the next morning. We uh, ended up getting a reputation for this, and it became a hard reputation to live up to because every morning they were expecting something new and spectacular out of us. <laughs> we had this joy board. The joy board was a peripheral that was used to uh, create games where you would use your whole body rather than just a joystick. It was a peripheral that you would stand on and the regular joystick input left, right, forward, backward, instead of being created with a joystick would be created by standing on the joy board and leaning forward, backward, left or right on that which would allow us to create all sorts of games. For instance, the, uh, the, the classic of them all was the downhill skiing game, which uh, you could play by standing on the joy board, and by leaning on it, you could create the same effect as skiing downhill. There was a, a woman named Susie Chaffee, who was the spokesperson for a, um, a lip balm in the United States called a uh, chapstick and they called her Susie Chapstick was what they called her and, and she became the spokesperson for our product as well and uh, was the you know the Amiga Joy Board user and she would get up there and demonstrate it and it was it was always interesting to watch her flex out well it's a long stuff. <laughs> 
But uh, so we would, um, uh, uh, you know, always have a lot of fun with this the the joy board, and we were always making jokes about it. And one of the jokes that we made was that we would use this board when we were working on the Amiga. We, we would uh, use it to calm ourselves by playing a game that we then said someday we're going to publish and, and make available to everyone. It was called the Zen Meditation Game, where, where instead of having an exciting action game, with the Zen Meditation Game, you would sit on the joy board in Zen Lotus style, and your object was to not move at all, to achieve perfect peace and stillness and not move in the least. And oh, the idea was, you know, what a ridiculous game this would be. Uh, that uh, we, we said that, um, uh, that you would get bonus points if you reached a state of nirvana while playing the game. <laughs> But the fun thing about it was that that's, that was originally the joke, the Zen meditation game. And, and we would say that we would use the game while we were working on bugs in, in the Amiga operating system. And we would sit on the, on the joy board and go into a state of Zen meditation and contemplate what was the problem with our source code. Mm, we would meditate upon it. And this turned into the guru meditation number that was the thing that you would see whenever t whenever the Amiga would crash. It was the evolution of one idea to the next. That uh, that crashed Amiga guru meditation number <laughs> came, came from all of that. And um, a, a little interesting bit of, of trivia. Uh, at the time, before Amiga, my, my favorite CPU was the uh, the 6809, which was the CPU that we had used at Williams. And the the Guru Meditation number, when it, when the, that error would come up, as you might remember, some of you have probably seen it very recently, would be all of a sudden the screen would drop down and there'd be a red border that would blink on and off while the, the text was displayed in the middle. And the code that would blink that border on and off, it would actually render the border over and over again in red and then render it over and over again in black. And the number of times that it would render it was 6809. It would render it 6,809 6, times in red and then 6,809 times in black. And that was the, the timing, and the timing was just perfect. Of course, it wouldn't work with later Amigas when they changed the clock speed, but back then it was great. <laughs> That's okay.